I, I got sucked into the show. So, uh, you know, I'm flicking around and suddenly uh, I'm on Bravo and I see these women and I hear they're from New York. So I had certain <laughs> expectations. We like people who make us feel good. These people with their pathetic lives make us feel good. They make us feel superior. They make me feel, you know, my life is worthwhile. Because they're involved in trivia and nonsense and, and things that really are not important. Essentially, this episode focuses on the verbal battle between uh, Bethany Franco and Jill Zarin. And they really are getting nowhere. They have an intermediate like Ramona, Ramona of the crazy eyes, and the inebriation over Pino Grigio, and Moan, the, the Countess. Um, and essentially, the problem is what they call communication is nothing but intersecting monologues. Well, uh, it's nice that they exercise. Uh, uh, Bethany had to speak to somebody. The only problem, she spoke to the person who was the world's worst listener, Ramona. And so, Ramona wouldn't even let Bethany speak. Uh, Ramona spends her time lecturing, criticizing, and trying to straighten out uh, Bethany. And by the time they get to the other side of the bridge, Bethany is really kicked off at Ramona. Since I'm getting on in years, one of the things I read is the obituary column. And I noticed six months ago that there was a horse trainer who died. And he was uh, survived by a daughter by the name of Bethany. His name was Frankel. Okay, that was six months ago. And they're talking on this show about uh, Bethany visiting her father in the West Coast. And he's on his deathbed, and and you think he's still alive. But I'm telling you, Bethany, the guy's dead. I read it in the New York Times. So, you know, she should put all of that uh, behind her. Yes. Well, Bobby, Bobby is normal. Is normal. And, uh, and uh, he, he, by far, by far is a... Uh, is a, the closest thing we have to a, have a real human being real human on the show. On the, show. The, second the second most normal, most person, normal person is the is second, Jason, second Jason, the boyfriend, the boyfriend of, Bethany, of Bethany, who, who says, says, I feel incomplete. I feel incomplete. Well, this guy's well, going to marry Bethany. Bethany. Then will be finished. Be finished. Um, but... Um, but uh, you know, Bethany is, you know, the, Bethany one is the one who brags. brags. She's got the she's got three Bs. Bees. She's got she's got books, a boyfriend, and a boyfriend boobs. Boobs. Okay. Well, Bethany, I, I mean, is the brightest one on the, of the six housewives, but her inter interpersonal skill is really pathetic, and Jill messed up this relationship. Uh, Jill, who used to be the purest of the housewives, uh, she messed it up by uh, putting Bethany on the speakerphone when the Countess Luann was present. And uh, um, th this is a big problem. You don't do that. It's a matter of manners. In fact, the Countess Luann has written a book on manners of all people. Uh, in fact, three of these people have actually written books, which I find quite amusing. 
Uh, there's Alec and her strange uh, outlandish husband, Simon Van Kempen. Uh, she's written a book. She, she's written a book on child rearing. She has two children. One is three and one is five. She lives, I think, in the Cobble Hill section of Brooklyn, which is a changing neighborhood. And she names her kids uh, Johannes and Francois. Now, since I come from Brooklyn, Bensonhurst by the sea overlooking scenic graves and bay, those kids better not go outside in the street. Or if they ask their names, they should say Nick and Tony. Then uh, the Countess has uh, written a book on manners, which she shows she knows nothing about from show to show. And last of all, there's Bethany, who, if you believe what she says, she's working on her third book, which is a bestseller. And since I buy the New York Times uh, every Sunday, because although I'm in Southern Florida now, where the average age is comatose and it's redundant to die, I still am hooked on getting the New York Times since I was born and raised uh, in New York. And I look at the book review section. I have never seen Bethany's book. However, in spite of all of this, she claims to have gone on a six-month book tour. <laughs> this is a, a riot. And uh, they're going nowhere. And they don't even know they're going nowhere. It's like a fish, you know. Does the fish know it's in the water? If you ever go fishing and you catch a fish, you know, and you pull it up through the water, you watch its eyes, its eyes bulge, as if to say, what the hell? Oh, it's in the water. And these women, they don't even understand what they're doing. And uh, Simon is the only man I know who's interested in women's fashions and lingerie. I mean, uh, more than his wife. 